If you've ever had the thought, I'm doing all the right things and I just cannot lose the weight. That's because you're right. In this video, I want to help you to understand why doing all the right things, following all the doctor's nutritionist information will leave us fatter than we were before. And to be honest, I'm not sitting here trying to tell you <laughs> that I was 70 pounds overweight because I was eating all the right things. I was eating the wrong foods, but I'm not just talking about chocolate cakes, ice cream, cookies, although those were regularly part of what I was eating. I'm talking about rice, pasta, whole wheat bread, potatoes. Let's look at the four myths that allow us to eat all the wrong foods and hold on to those extra pounds. If you're meeting me for the first time, I'm Violet. And if health and weight loss are top of mind for you, I think you're going to want to stick around because on this channel, we talk about how mental health and physical health coming together help us get that sense of well-being. That's really critical if you're going to improve your health and stabilize your weight. And if you're a returning wellness warrior, I'm really glad to have you back. The first myth that I want to talk about is really hurtful. I've, I've encountered it. I know you must have. You're lazy and you eat too much junk. This is why you're overweight. This is, it's your fault. And if you would just get control of yourself and why that's so, first of all, hurtful is it completely ignores that when you eat sugar, it impacts the pleasure centers of your brain and then pulls you back towards eating more sugar. And it doesn't have to be sweet sugar. Potatoes don't taste sweet. Pasta doesn't taste sweet. It still activates that part of your brain and causes you to crave. I can tell you that I spent years of my life occasionally stepping into that low fat world where I'm not eating the bad foods and yet still I end up chasing and I struggled for so many years not understanding why, first of all, the weight wasn't coming off, second of all, that I still had thoughts of eating all the wrong things because when you eat high carb suppers, when you get hungry a few hours later, you end up wanting to go get something else. And now you've had supper. So what's in your mind? It's cookies, it's cake, it's dessert, it's fun food, it's chips. The second myth kind of ties into the first, but it's the flip side of the coin, which is that fat causes weight gain. And we're very confused about food. I'm just going to say that out right now because we see processed foods as healthy. So, oh my gosh, I remember being in the grocery store and seeing the cookie diet and reading this box that was telling me how I could eat cookies for two of my meals and then lose weight. And I was excited by this. I was believing it because all the documentation on the box and everything telling me that this is going to keep my calories low and all this confusing information. And it ignores the fact that carbohydrates cause us, like I said in the first point, to chase sugar. And a cookie diet is based on this small amount of processed food that's based on carb, allowing me to have a low calorie count, but still has a high carb count. Unfortunately, this leads to this other thing, which says that it's okay to eat junk food sometimes, and especially if the junk food you're eating doesn't have a lot of fat in it, then, well, that's okay, right? Because if I keep my fat numbers low, I'm going to lose weight. Here's the problem. Carbohydrates is what causes weight gain. Now, why do carbohydrates cause weight gain? Carbohydrates cause weight gain because my body needs to quickly put carbohydrates away because in high numbers, sugar in my blood is toxic. Well, if I know that sugar in my blood is toxic, then would I keep eating heavily processed foods when I'm trying to lose weight? Not likely. But if I believe the myth that says fat is really what causes weight gain and all the professionals are telling me eating fat heavy foods is dangerous, Violet, don't do it. I'm less likely to take a chance on eating fat heavy food, even though there's another group of professionals saying that carbohydrates cause weight gain. So now I'm stuck, right? And I'm I'm looking at the foods that I'm eating and I don't know what to do. Now add to this that these professionals that are telling you that fats are bad for you and especially those saturated fats. Well, where do we find saturated fats? We find saturated fats on protein that are from animals. Think eggs, think meat, think fish. The problem that I see here is that the same professionals that are telling you that saturated fats are bad 
and asking you not to have the fat that comes along with the beef, pork, chicken that you're having seem okay with processed oils. So vegetable oil, canola oil, like seed oils, they're okay with us having these oils that are extracted through chemical processes. If I eat the fat that came on my chicken or the fat that came on my pork or beef, there's no need for chemicals to get that fat to me, but that's bad. Somehow extracting oils with chemicals and then using that in my food, that's okay. The third myth that I wanna talk about is that socialization needs to take place around food. And if I'm not eating what everybody else is eating, I can't socialize and that I'm gonna feel left out and my life is just gonna be horrible because I'm not eating what everybody else is eating. Or even I'm gonna be embarrassed if I'm not eating what everybody else is eating because then they're gonna know. They're gonna know that I have weight to lose and they're gonna, they're gonna shame me. And then I just say that when I was 70 pounds overweight, whether I ate what everybody was eating or I ate something different, you just needed to look at me to be able to tell that I had weight to lose. You just need to look at me to tell that maybe I shouldn't be eating the cake. So this idea that if I don't eat what everybody else is eating, somehow they're gonna figure out that I'm on a diet, it's, it's a useless thing to even pay attention to because truthfully, it's in my best interest to try to address my overweight problem. It's not about them. If I don't look at the fact that my weight is rising, has risen, is, is out of control and get it under control for me, whether they're noticing it or not, isn't going to change the fact that at some point I'm not going to have close to her, that at some point I might become diabetic, that at some point I might be in the hospital, that at some point I'm going to have bigger problems than whether or not you noticed what I ate today. That brings me to the part where I think that people say these things because we're not saying the other side of that coin, which is that I don't want to give up eating this stuff because it's fun to eat and it tastes great in my mouth. And so we tell ourselves stories, right? Because I don't want to give it up. I don't think I can give it up. Again, back to this, what's going on in my brain around eating these foods and how much am I hooked on them? Am I going to be with you and you're eating that and I'm eating what I'm thinking is rabbit food and then I'm jealous of what you get to eat and I'm just like, well, it's not fair and how come I can't be like you? And what we don't stop and think about is that I am like you. I'm just at a different stage than you are. There's a reality about what's healthy for us to eat and what's not. And if I'm letting myself eat something that's not good for my health, at some point, it's going to have an impact on me. Will it have the identical impact on me than it did on you? No, because you're a different person than I am. You're eating different kinds of junk food than I'm eating. You're eating different amounts of junk food than I'm eating. But the problem is, as long as I'm eating something that's unhealthy for my body, my body needs to do something with it. And that something, right, is going to be different for you and I. But the reason my body is doing it is the same that food isn't healthy for us. So when I'm eating that chocolate bar and it's giving me pain in my hip, but you're eating that chocolate bar and it's making your high, high blood pressure go, or it's making your PCOS worse, or it's making your brain fog worse, or it's making your weight rise, or it's, does it really matter that we have a different symptom? No. Does it matter that I'm at this spot and you're at that spot? No. What matters is that that chocolate bar is having a negative impact on our health, both of us. When I finally put myself in a position where I start eating properly and then I go out and I try to socialize and then I let myself eat off plan. So I cheat as people love calling it. I don't know how you're cheating on yourself, but this is what term we've put on this. I end up pulled right back into the story where now five, six, seven days later, I'm still eating off plan because once I do it, my cravings and being hooked all come back and that feeling of I got to have, I got to have is back. And I want you to think about how downright no, that should be for you. Just no, like it shouldn't be what you're thinking to do. You know, one of the reasons that I made the wellness squad community was so that we can talk to other people and see that our experience isn't that different than everybody else. I want you guys to be able to come together and connect with each other, connect with me, where we talk about not only that this happens, but how do we get past it? 
I want you to have a buddy that you can call when you're feeling cravings. I want you to talk to me when you're feeling cravings. I want us to help each other, support each other, and get past this stage where we constantly go back to eating the wrong thing. If you are interested in the community, the link's in the description. The fourth lie that I see so often that drives me crazy is this idea that, well, my body can manage the sugar because I'm healthy. We believe that being thin equals healthy. Can I just point out that it doesn't? There are thin people who have diabetes. There are thin people who have PCOS and heart problems and all kinds of inflammation issues. There are thin people with physical problems, first of all. But second of all, we think that we can exercise away a problem that we ate. So I want you to think about it from a different perspective. If I drink some poison, will exercising change anything for me? And of course we can see right there, the answer is no. When sugar in excess is entering our body, that's toxic. We're not exercising it away. What's happening is our body is neutralizing it. How does our body neutralize it? It puts it in fat storage or other parts of our body. So maybe you're gonna have inflammation like I did. Maybe you're gonna have heart issues and maybe you're going to have um uh what do you call that placking of arteries and all that your body is going to do with it what it sees to do with it because we're different does that mean that because i didn't gain weight i'm healthy now the second thing that i want to point out that we just ignore is that i'm healthy till i'm not we our body's interesting because it will do and do and do and do until it can't do anymore so what that means is that I'm eating too much sugar. My blood sugar, when my doctor takes it, looks normal. Why? Because my body was able to put it away as fat. And at some point, that's going to change. And then my blood sugar numbers is going to be a little bit high. And my doctor is going to say, hey, Violet, this is concerning. You should change that. I'm going to say, okay, and do all the wrong things. And my blood sugar, next time I go, is going to be a little bit higher. And it's going to keep being that little bit higher. It's not diabetes yet. But at some point it will become pre-diabetes and at some point it will become diabetes and at some point, right? Why? Because my body can manage it until it can't. And it's linked to this other idea we have that like I'm strong, I'm healthy and I'm going to be thin because my biology says so, or I'm overweight because my biology says so. And it's interesting because that's partially true. Where, what my body does with the sugar, yes, it's determined by my biology. But can I also point out that it's determined by the food I'm eating? Like I'd be much healthier and stronger and go further into the future if I allow myself to eat healthy food all the time. If I'm eating things that are high in sugar and high in fat at the same time, what I'm doing is, and that's usually what we're doing, by the way. Can I just point that out? We're eating hamburgers, high in sugar, high in fat. We're eating pizza, high in sugar, high in fat. We do this because we think we can exercise our way out of this story. But when we do things like this, what we need to understand is once my body is in storage mode, it's storing everything. So we get mad at the weight we're putting on, but we don't stop and realize that we're putting on the weight because of the way that we're eating. And my whole family will have their different issues with weight. Yes, we do. With eczema and skin issues. Yes, we do. With inflammation issues. Yes, we do. And all the different negatives and health things that we have because we eat similarly. We all eat a lot of rice, a lot of pasta, a lot of potatoes and carrots. And so when you put these things together, we all use oils and we were all using these poor quality man-made oil. When we put all of this together, is it any surprise that we all have weight issues, inflammation issues, skin issues, all the issues, health, high blood pressure, all the wellness, right? I need you to consider something. If it was strictly my biology that was causing this issue for me, then changing my diet would not have resulted in what's happened. I went from eating a very high carb diet to a very low carb diet that has a good amount of fat in it. So if my biology was causing this problem, I would still be overweight. Why? Because the amount of calories that I was eating from sugar and the amount of calories that I eat from fat and protein and the small amount of veg that I allow aren't that different.
The calorie count is still there. What I need everybody to think about is that if my biology was the cornerstone of all of this, Violet's going to be fat because her family is fat because it's in her genes, I'd still be fat. Your weight impacts your health on a physical level and a mental level. I'm happier today. And I'm saying that knowing that I was happy before, but I'm even happier today. It's, it's so hard to point out that we get used to whatever story we're living. And yes, at that weight, I figured out a way to live my life, to enjoy myself, to have fun, right? I was in a good relationship. I still am, same guy. And I was doing the activities then that I do now. What's different? It's easier to do my activities now. It's more fun for me to do my activities now. I'm actually better at doing these activities. I can longboard for much longer. We went tree climbing and it was so much easier than the previous years when I was overweight. I'm older and tree climbing was easier. Can we just put that in perspective for a moment? I am happier today because my body cooperates with me and I get to do the things that I imagine doing and I do them in a way that feels amazing. If you want to be healthy, what should you actually do? And the obvious answer is eat healthy, nutrient-dense food. But the problem is, what does that mean? We don't stop and take time to explain the difference between a cookie and bacon. Those are two foods that are fun, right? We're, we're told you shouldn't eat cookies all the time. That, that's a treat. But you shouldn't eat bacon all the time. That's a treat. I'm asking Wellness Warrior for you to look at that situation and really, is that reality? Is a cookie equivalent to bacon when we're talking about they're both treats? And what I want you to think about is the fact that if I eat a cookie, the amount of sugar in there that's going to cause my body to jump into fat storage mode, first of all, and it's going to tell my body that something toxic is coming in, that that reaction all by itself should have you pause and think to yourself, if my body reacts aggressively, if my body reacts in panic mode to something I'm eating, can I actually say then that that's healthy? If I have some bacon, and let's say I have the same amount of calories worth of bacon as I had cookie, my body does not react the same way. My body will see incoming nutrients, that's for sure, but my body will use that energy that my body will place those proteins and those fats in places that I can use them to build a quality version of me. Why? The other part of the story is that the ingredients to that cookie are usually coming from fats that are processed. And so man-made is what I mean to say when I say processed. And it's coming from uh, ingredients that are plant-based. And so now what you really have is incoming nutrients that my body is not as familiar with, is not as able to use, this is not similar enough to what my body is as if I ate that bacon, which is more similar, right? It's animal to animal versus plant to animal. That matters. And I don't want you to take my word for that. There's lots of doctors talking about the fact that eating animal food, Dr. Sean Baker is the one that comes to mind right away, but Dr. Barry's also talking about it. Eating animal-based foods is healthier for the body. It's important for you to learn what is healthy for the human body. You're feeding, when we feed our pets, we, we, I, I did my research, what's healthy for a dog, what's healthy for a bearded dragon, what's healthy for a chinchilla. I did my research and I feed my animals appropriate foods. But yet somehow when we're feeding ourselves, we're eating for fun. We need to cut that out. In order to be healthy, managing your stress is also extremely important. One thing that we need to keep in mind is that when we get stressed, our cortisol levels rise. When our cortisol levels rise, we end up releasing a bit of sugar into the system because historically, high cortisol levels meant that we were going to need to either run away from some kind of danger or fight some kind of danger. And you need energy for that. In today's world, is not always the case. A lot of the times the danger that we have is more a talk scenario, right? Or an emotional scenario. So managing our stress becomes really important because if I'm able to do it well, 
and my cortisol levels are not constantly high, I'm not dripping sugar into my system all the time, which can lead to inflammation issues. Now, we need to keep in mind that there's good stress and there's bad stress. So if I have a little bit of stress, so excitement and like, you know, like I'm, I'm gearing up for something like when we went to do skydiving uh, activity, then yeah, that's going to give you a little bit of stress, but it's okay because we actually then did expend some energy because it was an activity that we're doing. Doing a cool adventure isn't the same thing as being stressed for extended periods of time because, for example, my relationship isn't going well, or for example, because I'm having a problem at work and I'm, I'm not dealing with it right away. Those kinds of long extended exposures to stress they, they have a, a damaging impact on our body. They have a damaging impact on our emotional state because then we start to associate negatives with work and we're at work how much of the day or I associate negatives with getting home and seeing my spouse. And if you're stressed about that interaction and if you're constantly stressed about that interaction, then yeah, your, your enjoyment of your evening and possibly your enjoyment of being at home at all is going to completely change. And that impacts our health. What we're gonna to need to do is take a decision. When, when there's problems in front of us, we actually need to solve the problems in front of us. So if we're talking about weight loss, that might mean creating a meal plan, or that might mean committing to a specific diet. Of course, you know, I'm gonna tell you to choose keto, but Whatever diet you commit to, you need to commit to a specific diet and then follow through. It might mean that you stop buying garbage processed food that's not healthy for you at all. Just don't bring it in your house, but you need some kind of plan that's gonna help you address the weight that you're trying to lose. More so than just saying, yeah, I want it to change. A plan is needed. If the stress is coming from life, a plan is needed. If the stress is coming from mental health, it's talking to someone, so a plan is needed. And when you do this, when you, when you take steps, make a plan, a follow through, then it's important for you to acknowledge what kind of outcome you're getting. It's not because today I was able to eat on plan and not be tempted that it doesn't mean that tomorrow I might be tempted or the next day. And it doesn't mean that because I was able to eat on plan and not be tempted for four years, that if I eat off plan today, that I should be able to do that that one time and never have a problem. I need to look at the data and then react appropriately to the data, right? And I can tell you for myself that after eating on plan for more than a year, I ate off plan. So I had some nuts. And boy, did it throw me for a loop. And then I was chasing. And then I had weeks of getting myself back on plan. Had I not looked at the data and just really let myself interact with what's happening. This isn't me deciding that I want to eat this. This is me being pulled to go eat this. This is me not being able to stay out of the store to go get it. We struggle because we're not allowing ourselves to see what works and what doesn't work. And that, that leads us to constantly repeat bad actions while we ignore and don't follow through on doing those good ones because we just, we expected that we should have to do it one time and it should be over, right? And that's not how it works. I wanna dive a little deeper with you guys into what to look for when you're choosing healthy foods. So I created this playlist right here. I want you to go watch those videos because you can change your life and have a body that you're able to go and have fun in. But it takes time, it takes effort. I know you guys can do it. Well, I swear, I'm so thankful that you came and watched the video. Share it with a friend if you think that this can be helpful to somebody. I'll talk to you in the next video.